the idea that we have that the arts are different is a very new and highly artificial distinction. I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. In most of uh, our churches, dancing is not allowed. This would have seemed absolutely unreasonable to an earlier human being who would express his uh, belief in the divinity, whatever it was, by singing and dancing. And uh, the whole notion in our society, for example, when you dance, when you get on a dance floor, you don't sing, <laughs> you just dance. It's ridiculous. Why shouldn't you sing along as you're dancing? But we don't do it in popular dancing. For one thing, the orchestra now has got too loud. <laughs> you can't even hear conversation, let alone singing when you're dancing. <laughs> But uh, also, as I say, in churches they have been divorced. Dancing was seen to be sinful. And in certain periods, uh, in certain societies, of course, the visual arts have been seen to be sinful, too. Found to be idolatrous. You don't do that. So the, these distinctions between the arts are highly artificial. And fortunately, in our age, we've we've moved them back together again and called it ironically multimedia as though there were a lot of different media being gathered together and put together when they should never have been separated in the first place. Mm -hmm. They all belong together. The, the, the sculpture is a form of frozen dance. Uh, architecture is, has been observed as a form of frozen music and uh, so on. Singing is a is so close to speech, poetry is so close to prose, you know, the, the, the distinctions are really highly artificial. Mm -hmm. We draw a lot of lines um, in our lives, uh, which brings to mind um, <clears throat> the idea of cultural sovereignty within a country or a geographical region. Would you say that, that our cultural sovereignty here in Canada is at risk? Oh, sure because everything to do with our sovereignty is at risk. Canada is in a very particular situation. Arguments, general arguments about nationalism and so on are hard to apply to Canada because we are an extreme case. We sit next the biggest arts, entertainment and educational factory that the world has ever seen. And uh, our position is therefore so odd, being absolutely in the front line of the, the cultural battle, and I'll explain what that is in a second, that um, the, the generalizations are very hard to apply to uh, Canada. Also, as you know, we are very precariously strung out against the, 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 the other culture. Uh, and not only against, sometimes entirely with it, along the this boundary. Mm -hmm. The most important thing that's happening in the world today, in my view, has very little to do with economics, very little to do with the military, less than one would think to do with politics. It is the collision that is occurring between the supercultures and what one might call, I'm avoiding the word national, the folk cultures of the world. Are we going to have, on the face of this planet, a cultural pluralism, that is to say, a large number of cultures which have grown and developed in their own ways, or are we going to have a kind of superculture a planetary culture? Are we going to be homogenized by the superculture? Uh, there are arguments in favor of both, but the principal argument against the superculture is the one you raised earlier, that it hogs the means of distribution, it hogs the airwaves, it hogs the print media. Uh, and it squeezes out, therefore, efforts to be different and to do different things creatively. All this talk of uh, free trade and cultural exchange and so on is totally meaningless if you have nothing to trade. 
and nothing to exchange. Nothing unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you are uh, a, a consumer of culture only, then you have nothing to trade. That's not a trade at all. You are simply buying what others create. A taker, not a giver. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, one of the great, one of the few great Canadian philosophers of the arts, Roy Mitchell, the man of the theater who went down to the United States and wrote perhaps the most important book about the theater ever written in the United States, called Creative Theater. Roy Mitchell, who worked in Canada in the 20s, referred to those uh, with the itch to take instead of the itch to make.